Since posting my last longboard video, I've been riding the board quite a bit and made a few changes to make it better for me. In this video I'll be going over those changes. This board is now mostly my daily driver. I also built another belt drive board I sometimes switch off with. I'll be putting together a video on that build soon. So I've been riding this updated version of the longboard around downtown LA and I've been riding it for actually a while now and I'm really happy with it now. This deck is so much better for me and it's smaller and it has a kicktail. So one of the other changes I made to this board is the grip tape. I went with this carpet instead of the um, non-abrasive grip tape I was using before, like the rubbery one from DKL. It's a good concept, but it still peels up a lot. The carpet has been doing a good job at, you know, staying put. It doesn't peel at all. And it's fine for riding. It gives me enough traction. We'll see. So far, so good. I also made a few other changes. I improved the battery container. I found this other container on Amazon. It's made by the same company, and it fits these two 5S uh, 3 amp hour batteries really well. It might fit the 4 amp hour batteries. I'm not sure I might try it with those later, but these fit pretty well now It's much more secure easier to get to Also, I updated the ESC this one I think I actually got from Meepo board, but the the seller on eBay also sells the same version now I realize I'm sort of violating the title of this video since this is no longer a longboard update the new cruiser deck does have a pretty long wheelbase for a 32 inch shortboard though. As far as longboards go, I think this is a great deck. I'm just too used to a shortboard shape. So here I'm putting on the carpet grip tape. I got this from Home Depot. I think any carpet designed for outdoor use should be fine. To stick it to the board I used this spray adhesive. I apply the spray to both surfaces and let it dry a few minutes. Then I just stick it on like regular grip tape. I start from the center of the board and then make sure all the edges are tight without any air bubbles. It is a bit harder to cut than regular grip tape, so I made sure to use a sharp blade and cut slowly. It helps to cut away large sections first and then make another more detailed cut. It's much nicer to touch than grip tape. These buckle straps and velcro worked well enough and are a good option for batteries you don't have a correct sized container for. However, I think the food container is better because it's easier to take the battery in and out. And I also like that it covers the battery to help protect it from scratches and impacts. I'll have to keep an eye on it for cracks though. There was an incident with the container breaking that I'll go over shortly, which was the only issue I had so far. Although you might want to consider a different container option if you like dropping off high curbs. I'm in the process of making another video that goes over all the details of installing the batteries in ESC. I'll try to get it done this week. This is the newer ESC I installed. The most obvious change is the addition of a battery meter. This version also has three speeds instead of two. It now includes a medium speed that accelerates more slowly and smoothly than fast mode and maxes out at around 18 miles an hour. My only complaint is the medium mode has a bit of lag when I accelerate, similar to the slow mode. I think that's okay for slow, but it would be nice if medium started up a bit faster. Here's what it's like in fast mode for comparison. <laughs> I'm not used to that anymore. Fast mode is a bit harsh though. I think something between fast and the way medium is now would be good. Once it gets going, medium mode is fine. It's just the lag in the beginning that's annoying. Here I was riding around getting ready to talk about the board updates and... battery container cracked open right as I crossed a busy downtown intersection. I gotta be careful. Lucky for me this FedEx store was nearby and they were nice enough to let me use their packing tape. This is the piece that fell off. I guess the plastic's kind of fragile. I gotta be careful, I gotta keep an eye on it. I've been through some pretty rough terrain with that battery case, so I'm not sure yet if this was just an unlucky incident. Although I'll definitely be avoiding big drops. 
Just before the battery container broke, I was about to go up a very steep hill in downtown LA. Alright, I'm back to the same intersection. I don't know the exact incline, but it's probably one of the steepest in the area. I was surprised by how fast this board was able to go up. My old daily driver with the 83mm motors definitely wouldn't make it up this. Let's see how the brakes do down this hill. It also did a great job braking on the way down. I was getting ready to jump off at any moment if the brakes gave out. With a busy intersection directly at the bottom, losing the brakes can be scary. Fortunately, I was able to make it the whole way down safely. I'd still always be careful when braking down steep hills though. As I mentioned, I'll be posting another video with many of the details of putting a board together. I've been a bit busy juggling a big house project, but I should have the video posted soon. For the house project, I recently tore down my house and working on rebuilding it. A good lesson I've learned so far is don't leave lipo packs in the garage when you're tearing a house down. That was these batteries that got damaged in the crash on my previous daily driver. The demolition crew got a bit freaked out and luckily this didn't turn out worse. I think this board is getting pretty close to the best I can build right now. There's always room for improvement though. I recently finished another belt drive build I mentioned before. I'll be going over that build in detail and seeing how it compares to this one. As always, please leave any comments or questions about this build, and let me know any enhancements you've made to your board. Thanks for watching.